Measuring plasma D dimer has important role to define prognosis of coronavirus diseases 2019. Especially in patients who already have high risk of thromboembolism. For example in case of deep vein thrombosis. Coronavirus stimulates pro-inflammatory cytokines and generates a prothrombotic state. If thrombosis occurs, plasma D-dimer level increases, and it can serve as a marker of disease progression. D-dimer is the product of blood clot destruction. Platelets in the blood are connected to a D-subunit. So platelets bound together via D-dimers along with other factors, such as fibrin. As soon as clot formed, it begins to break down and this breakdown product is D-dimer. A number of subsequent studies conducted around the world have confirmed that D-dimer is elevated in those with severe COVID-19 and highest in those who are most critically ill and those who do not survive. A normal D-dimer is considered less than 0.50 mg per litre or gml. A positive D-dimer is 0.50 or greater. If D-dimer level is 3.48 gml, there is five times higher chance of severe cases and death. Generally before COVID-19, most established utility of the D-dimer test was investigation of patients suspected venous thromboembolism, deep vein thrombosis and its sequelae, pulmonary embolism. D-dimer is almost always increased in case of deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. In rare cases D-dimer is ultra-high level. In such patients death rate is higher compared to other people. So, when D-dimer is high, potential diagnoses are, pulmonary embolism, PE, deep vein thrombosis, DVT, or disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. A negative D-dimer test will virtually rule out thromboembolism. The degree to which the D-dimer reduces the probability of thrombotic disease is dependent on the test properties of the specific test used in the clinical setting. Most available D-dimer tests with a negative result will reduce the probability of thromboembolic disease to less than 1% if the pretest probability is less than 15-20%. to Chest computed tomography, CT angiography, should not be used to evaluate pulmonary embolism for persons with negative results of a D-dimer assay. If the D-dimer reads high, then further testing, ultrasound of the leg veins or lung scintigraphy or CT scanning, is required to confirm the presence of thrombus. Anticoagulant therapy may be started at this point or withheld until further tests confirm the diagnosis, depending on the clinical situation. Measuring of D-dimer can reduce the need for unnecessary tests in those who are high probability. Performing the D-dimer test first can avoid a significant proportion of imaging tests and is less invasive. Since the D-dimer can exclude the need for imaging, specialty professional organizations recommend that physicians use D-dimer testing as an initial diagnostic.